The Matrice 4 Enterprise is literally everything that the Mavic 3 Enterprise wanted to be, and it's so much more fun to fly. It's almost like as if you went from driving a Pinto to a Ford EcoBoost Twin Turbo. It's a completely different world. Gone are the days of the coordinated banking turn where your aircraft is making these nose out turns. You know what? The software limitations on flying this drone are gone and I couldn't be more happy. Although if you're looking at this drone to be your next mapping workhorse, it's definitely a mapping workhorse, but it offers almost no increase in efficiency whatsoever for your mapping missions albeit the shutter is 0.5 seconds or 0.2 seconds faster than the Mavic 3 Enterprise. So if you're capturing those super detailed low elevation maps and 3D models, it will be slightly more efficient. Now that being said, this drone is quite impressive. One of the biggest pros is even though it's more expensive to buy this drone than a Mavic 3 Enterprise, the remote and the built-in RTK antenna alone are worth the price. But let's talk about some of these key features and break down whether it's really worth it to get it. If you can still fly DJI, I think it's worth it to get it. I'm just gonna throw that out there, okay? Here we go, 49 minute flight time. You can take off in less than 15 seconds with a max speed of 47 miles an hour. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, this drone does have attitude mode, so you can avoid all the necessary emergencies that happen on a frequent basis, especially like on cold days. It also can be flown up to 15 miles away, although the FAA might have something to say if you were to fly that far away. You can also actually fly unlimited distances as it does have a 5G dongle associated with it, just like the Skydio X10. And the first to do that was actually the Parrot Anafi AI, which is now a similar price point. Think about it, this drone is now the same cost as a Parrot Anafi AI, and people were complaining about how expensive the Parrot Anafi AI was. Interesting. This drone also has a major obstacle avoidance upgrade that is probably between the remote and the obstacle avoidance, it is probably the most major upgrades about why this drone is actually quite valuable for people in mapping, especially complex 3D modeling. Gone are the days of the obstacle avoidance sensors just telling you a singular distance, whether you had an obstacle to the right, obstacle to the left, above you, below you, etc. This omnidirectional obstacle avoidance operates similar into the way that Skydio does, except instead of mapping the environment, it's simply notating distances to the right, distances to the left, and then taking the two distances and understanding its position and environment so that it can actually fly in more complex environments. To put it more simply, it's a significant obstacle avoidance upgrade as the suite or the combination of sensors are now working together for a more accurate interpretation of where the drone is in space. When we talk about cameras, it has the exact same micro four thirds sensor for mapping cameras, which brings up an important point. Does it de-warp or does it not? I don't know, but it's one of the best ways to light a fire in any Facebook group. Moving on, it does have one additional camera on it than the Mavic 3 Enterprise. While we do have the wide and medium and now super zoom. So you can actually zoom 112 times hybrid zoom. It's actually pretty good, but it's not as good as an M30T in my humble opinion. So if you are looking for a significant zoom, like looking at your neighbor's license plate from 17 miles away, you might want the M30T for that. That being said, the built-in RTK antenna does offer real-time corrections. Unfortunately, I have not had an opportunity to test that. I think the big thing here is the laser range finder, which is allowing people to understand true distances to objects. So if you're flying decently far away and you need to know how far away you are from the center of a cell tower for a cell tower inspection, now you can align the drone and the laser to hit the cell tower and actually showcase exactly where it is in real time. Once the laser range finder and the wide angle camera are actually used in combination, it's going to make mapping missions significantly more accurate. There have been companies who have already figured out how to do that with the M30T. I'm just waiting for DJI to pluck that from one of their third party applications like they do with all the other ones. Okay, sorry for the truth bombs, but here we go. In addition to a great nadir camera orientation like most drones, this camera can actually tilt up 35 degrees as well. While it's not as good as Skydio's X10 Zenith tilting up, which is pretty impressive, 
35 degrees should be enough for some basic bridge inspections, none of which will happen in the United States. So good luck with that, Canada. All right, moving forward, I will say, this is the most fun I've had flying a DJI drone in so long. Over the last five years, pretty much every single DJI drone has been dumbed down further and further and further and further. And that's the thing is that in the age of the domestic versus foreign drones and how that race is heating up, one thing is becoming really clear. If you don't have the skills to fly really well, you will get left behind because a lot of these features don't exist in American drones. So it is important to have really good skill when it comes to flying. This drone puts the power back in the hands of the pilot as the software limitations are gone and it is so much more fun. But in addition, it actually has smooth zooming in and out. So if you want to get that Alfred Hitchcock effect or the dolly zoom, you can actually do that on this drone. If most of you probably don't remember, but it was the original Mavic 2 Enterprise that had that functionality. And I seriously own that drone just for that one feature because it was awesome. But not only can you smoothly zoom in and out, but you can also nudge the camera left and right when you are zoomed in, which is a significant improvement on this drone. That feature was typically left for the M30Ts or the M30s of the day. It's a significant improvement too in positioning control, meaning like how the drone actually sees the ground, flies a hover control. What's really interesting here though, is that you get no internal storage, which was kind of interesting to see. So long story short, this drone is gonna fly super well in complex environments and offer really unprecedented capability for such a portable drone. If you're considering buying an M30T or an M30 over this drone, there are a couple things to consider. Number one, DJI is gonna drop the M40T by September. So consider your purchasing decisions. Number two, I will say that the M30T has superior zoom cameras, but the mapping camera is only 12 megapixels. So it's actually a significant downgrade from this drone itself. What is cool about the M30T or the M30 is that you have self heating batteries, which these are not. In addition, the M30 can handle much more adverse weather conditions and much more intense winds. So if you live in a windy area, like you have to deal with convective currents because maybe you're on a shoreline in the Northeast or down in Florida or whatever, the M30 is gonna be a little bit better to handle those winds. The Matrice 4 Enterprise Pros though, is that you've got higher zoom capabilities, one additional camera from the Mavic 3 Enterprise, a slightly faster mechanical shutter, which is really nice for mapping. One of the best things about this drone is how it flies. It seriously is so much more fun to fly. Smooth zooming in, nudging the camera, but you can also track things super smooth, super easy. Like, honestly, I think law enforcement is gonna really love this drone because you can draw a box over a car really, really quickly and it's gonna lock onto that car. You just move the drone and it's gonna stay locked on. Like, it's incredible how capable this particular aircraft is. Other pros are this remote. The fact that you have the non-reflective screen, it's much brighter, and more importantly, if you're using this remote and you live anywhere where it's remotely cold, like Colorado where I woke up to zero degrees this morning, you can actually wear gloves with this drone because it's got physical buttons. Now DJI did do a very good, um, I don't know why they did this, but they did a good job of making this remote look slightly cheaper than the M30T remote, which is darker and has a different font on the buttons. But you still do get the nice orange button there. It just doesn't have a texture to it like the M30 remote does. That being said, limitations on this drone is that there is no 4K60 video recording, only 4K30. I haven't seen any ND filters for this thing just yet. It does offer significant new onboard computing functionality that we haven't seen before. So it says it can count cars, it can count people, it can count vessels. Unfortunately, we have a boat here at the office and it did not see the boat, could not count the vessel. There's a boat over there at the adjacent property, it couldn't see it either. So maybe the Chinese have trouble identifying a boat, but for us, we don't. And this drone just can't see the boats, I don't know why. Maybe it's a object identification, whatever it is. The onboard computing is really cool. The laser rangefinder is really cool as well, except it's massively inaccurate. We have scale constraints all around the office for our mapping classes, and I tried measuring multiple of them. They're all 15 feet long, and it would continue to show 
that the laser rangefinder and that measuring tool was showing nine and a half feet when it was 15 feet. So there's probably a little bit of fine tuning that's gonna go into learning how to really effectively use that tool. For example, we know there's a difference between Nader GSD and Oblique GSD. So I'm wondering if I like draw a point and then have the camera at Nader and pitch it back to where I wanna draw that other point if it'll be a more accurate measurement. More testing is needed for sure. The area measurements that we took of the landscape supply company next door, which we map all the time for class, were completely off. So, I mean, I mean, many acres off and it's not a large field. So there's still really no dedicated cinematography coming out of this drone. Look, many of us know that if you're flying drones for a commercial or industrial entity, it's not just about creating maps and models. It's also about creating captivating video that showcases the progress, that showcases the hard work, and that showcases the man-made effort to make these things happen. Unfortunately, you won't be showcasing those things with this drone because there are much better drones out there like the Air 3S. I, I actually think that if you're in a construction company, the two drones that you probably want are this drone and an Air 3S. But that takes the comparison of American drones and Chinese drones into a new ballpark, which is important to remember. So accessories and features, there are customizable buttons on this. You have an HDMI out here on the remote. You can also put a micro SD on this particular remote. And what I really love about it is that you can put a Crystal Sky battery in the back of the remote and keep this thing buzzing for days and days and days, which is really nice because that Mavic 3 Enterprise remote would die after like five mapping missions. So significant improvement there. Overall, again, when I said at the beginning of this video that this drone is everything that the Mavic 3 Enterprise wanted it to be, that could not be more apropos for this particular review. The other thing is it does have a speaker and a spotlight available. We didn't get either one of those because I already harassed my neighbors enough. Just kidding. Okay, final thoughts. Should you upgrade your aircraft from your Mavic 3 Enterprise or Phantom 4 Pro into this drone? In all honesty, it is a very good mapping drone. It still has some funky facade mapping missions that again, most mapping softwares cannot use. And I will also say major security warning on this drone. Um, we all know that Flight Sync was taken out last year when DJI was lambasted for the security vulnerabilities, which now Congress has actually noted in the Federal Register as legitimate security issues. And I think it was good that DJI actually took that data sync feature out. But now when you start up this drone, it's like, well, do you want to be a part of the um, feedback loop? Do you want your flight logs uploaded? So data sync's technically back. Do you want this information, this information, this information, this information, this information sent back to DJI headquarters so that we can make better product developments? No, no, I don't. And we actually uh, were able to see that our last Mavic 3 Enterprise remote would automatically connect to our Wi-Fi at really weird times. So when I turned this drone on, I connected it to my hotspot so it can never connect to the internet unless I allow it to which I wish it was that way for most technology-based devices. So at least you can do that. Just be careful, once you activate this drone, I recommend that you activate it on an email that is not affiliated at all with what you do or who you are. In addition, when you do activate it, use your cellular hotspot so that way the drone cannot connect to internet for any other reason. And do not ever plug this drone into a networked computer. Um, because something was really, really weird. I took the SD card out of this drone, which it comes with a 64 gig SD card in it, and it had DJI Terra as an EXE or executable file on the SD card. I am not a security major, I am not a um, security expert, but putting executable files on SD cards when you plug them into your computer, it just, it just raises a little a red flag for me. So I'm not saying they're doing anything bad, but DJI has definitely gotten a little bit smarter about um, data transmission and privacy, and they're working really, really hard to upsell you on DJI Terra, which is a pretty cool program, but I will never use it or teach on it simply because it is um, not allowed for government contracts, sled contracts, etc. So for me, there's no market for it. So anyway, 
I don't say this to bash you, DJI. You guys make amazing drones. We all know that. It's phenomenal. But I think you need to be building credibility here, not taking away from it. If we're going to leave the market open to buying DJI, which I want DJI too, you guys make superior aircraft. They're awesome. Um, but we also you know, understand that you're on a hundred year mindset and we are emotionally unstable and wonder about which drone we're gonna buy in two years. So very different ideological stance there. I will say, if you are looking to upgrade to an American drone, should you buy this drone? Probably not. The Freefly Astro Prime is astronomically, isn't that funny, astronomically, more efficient than the Matrice 4 Enterprise simply because it's got a full frame 64 megapixel sensor. When we did a test, you know, this drone will map, uh, I forget, what was it, like 20 to 25 acres in 11 minutes, and the Freefly Astro did it in 2.5. So significant improvement in efficiency. This drone is best suited for enterprise pilots needing an all-in-one industrial drone. The 4K 30 video is pretty good, but for some of us who want that nice slow-mo cinematic aspect you're still gonna have to probably buy a mavic 4 pro or inspire 3. if dji had included 4k 60 this drone would be near perfect and you probably wouldn't need another drone for a very long period of time so would you upgrade to the matrice 4 enterprise let me know in the comments below but what i will say the biggest thing about this drone is that the obstacle avoidance is significantly better i don't really count on that much the remote is astronomically better, which I love to use. The AI features are kind of gimmicky in my opinion, but more testing to be done with that laser range finder. On top of all of that, I will say, I haven't had a DJI drone that is this much fun to fly in a very long time. So if you're like me and you love to passionately take flight, you will love this drone. That's gonna do it for us today. Let me know what you think about this drone. I know there's gonna be a lot of comments on the whole, you know, foreign versus domestic drone. I think there's a much larger macro picture here. And if you haven't seen the Sean Ryan interview with Palmer Lucky about the United States manufacturing capabilities versus China and what that does to our economic footprint in the world, I highly recommend that you watch that interview. It will provide a lot more um, understanding for the, the bigger picture here. That being said, I still love flying DJI. Who doesn't? Let's come on, get out of here. We need more collaboration in this industry. So that being said, amazing drone. Absolutely love it. I think you'll love flying it too. To clarify, this review is not on a Matrice 4T as in Tango, but a Matrice 4E as in Echo. Um, because honestly, if you want a really good thermal drone, you can get the M30T, it's much better. That's gonna do it for me here at Drone HQ. Thanks again for watching this review. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Seriously, I will listen to well thought out comments. I do appreciate it. I, I take pride in growing and I take pride in feedback. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you in the next new show, podcast, review video, course. We, we're updating all of our courses right now. You seriously will not believe how much better they are. And again, we're one of the few certified trainers and instructors on photogrammetry. So you're gonna love those classes and so much more. Check them out. Thanks again for supporting us at the Drone UHQ.